Hello everyone, welcome back to Talking History. My name's Liz, thank you so much for joining me today. On this channel, I do exactly as it's called, I talk all about history. I'd like to apologise for my lack of video last week. Um, I had a few technical issues. Let's just say I had a few gremlins having a party in my laptop, making it a bit difficult to upload a video. But I am back and hopefully this video will be going out ready for you to all enjoy. Uh, we are still in the Anglo-Saxon but we Saxon period, but we are heading very, very quickly to the Norman period. It won't be long now. And today's video is all about Hartha Canute. Arthur Canute, sometimes known as Canute III, was born in 1018. He was born to King Canute and Emma of Normandy. Um, after the birth of Arthur Canute, King Canute had soon decided that his two sons from his previous marriage to Alfgifu of Northampton would be cast aside in the line of succession as the young Hartha Canute was to follow in his father's footsteps. And King Canute, whose territory was ever expanding, had claimed the throne of Denmark after the death of Harold III in 1018. And as a result, Hartha Canute would be destined to spend much of his youth in Denmark. And by the arrangements of his father, he was crowned prince of Denmark, whilst Canute's brother-in-law, I apologise for the pronunciation of this name, Ulfjall, Ulfjall, was to serve as regent until Hartha Canute reached age. And this movement had resulted in Howard Hereford leaving Denmark and going to England. And all through Hartha Canute's childhood, his father's power grew and he quickly became one of the most significant figures in Scandinavia, defeating his opponents at the Battle of Halgi. Halgi? Halgia. Halgia? And in 1028, King Canute had laid claim to the throne of Norway, becoming the ruler of the North Sea Empire. Canute left Norway to his eldest son, to um, Alfgifu of Northampton, um, Swain. And it appears that Hartha Canute actually had a really good relationship with his older half-brother Swain. When Swain lost Norway to King Magnus I, Hartha Canute took Swain in. King Canute died in 1035, leaving enormous shoes to be filled. Hartha Canute had a massive task ahead of him. As Hartha Canute had succeeded um, as King of Denmark, he faced a military threat from King Magnus I, much like his half-brother had done in Norway. Back in England, Harold Hereford was ruler and Hartha Canute's mother, Emma of Normandy, um, was holding on to um, Wessex. Howard, wishing to keep his grip on the power and usurped the other claimants to the throne, in 1036, Howard had Alfred the Eighthling, which is Hartha Canute's older half-brother, brutally blinded, resulting in his death. In 1037, Hartha Canute, still preoccupied in Denmark, Howard Hereford was accepted as King of England. Emma of Normandy had fled to Flanders for refuge and she would be later be joined by Hartha Canute who had made an agreement with King Magnus I in keeping each other's kingdoms. Hartha Canute had also agreed in making each other their heirs of each other's kingdoms. 
So if he had wished to, Magnus could have laid claim to England after Hartha Canute's death. Hartha Canute had sailed to Flanders with 10 ships meeting his mother. Whilst planning their next move, Howard Hereford had died in March 1040 and this paving the way for Hartha Canute to succeed the English throne. Hartha Canute had arrived in England on the 17th of June in 1040 along with his mother, Emma of Normandy, and he arrived much like a conqueror. He arrived with a fleet of 62 ships and around 5,000 men. The population of London at this time was around 10,000. Although Hartha Canute's succession was expected, he still arrived with a force of men to support his arrival. And the first thing on Hartha Canute's agenda as king was to avenge the murder of his half-brother Alfred. Emma, also keen to see justice done for the son that she had lost, Hartha Canute had Howell's body removed from his resting places in Westminster and had it publicly beheaded. His body was then thrown into the River Thames where it would later be recovered by Howell's um, followers and buried in a churchyard. The Earl of Wessex, Godwin, was also put on trial over his involvement in Alfred's death. And Godwin had remarkably evaded any punishment by offering Hartha Canute a substantial bribe in the form of an ornately decorated ship. The cost of this ship was close to the amount that Godwin would have had to pay in compensation if he were found guilty. Hartha Canute's reign was short and it brought widespread poverty and suffering. Hartha Canute had made the decision to double the size of the English fleet in order to deal with any outside threats to both England and Denmark. The men he brought with him, well they need a pay in. So in order to fund this and increase the military, there was a subsequent increase in taxation. The increase in the taxes had led to resentment against his rule, particularly as it coincided with a really bad harvest. Hartha Canute had doubled the taxes to the equivalent of 11 thousand pounds. People were broke and they were starving. Hartha Canute had also refused to adapt to the English way of kingship where a king ruled in a council of chief advisers. Where, but he chose to rule England in an autocratic rule the way he had in Denmark. Hartha Canute was distrustful of the earls around him and he found he needed to intimidate and bully those around him. Initially this may have worked but this only led to more volatile situations that were compounded by his heavy-handed approach. In 1041 in Worcester, two of Hartha Canute's tax collectors were murdered um, by a mob as riots had broke out from the harshness of the measures that were being imposed. Hartha Canute had responded in an equally forceful manner using a method that was known as harrying. Hartha Canute had ordered for the town of Worcester to be burnt down, having the civilians killed. 
Many of the residents in Worcester had heard of the punishment and was able to flee, um, taking refuge against Hartha Knut's troops in an island in the River Severn. And the people of Worcester were able to get to safety, although their city was burned and plundered, but the casualties were low. This event only caused even more resentment against Hartha Knut's wall. And just when we think things couldn't get even worse, they do. Hartha Knut had Earl Edwolf of Bernica? Berntia? Berntia? Uh, he was uh, the man who had ruled the north of Northumbria in pretty much full independence. Hartha Knut had him murdered in cold blood, all because Edwolf had attempted to reconcile with the king. Northumbria was also left seething, much like Worcester had been. The Anglo-Saxon chronicles documented in Edward's murder as betrayal. King Hartha Knut was viewed as an oath breaker. Hartha Knut died on the 8th of June in 1042 at the age of 24. He died after consuming large amounts of alcohol during the celebrations of a wedding and Hartha Knut suffered a seizure and he fell to the ground. Written in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicles, he died as he stood as at his drink and he suddenly fell to the earth with an awful convul convulsion and those who were close by took hold of him and he spoke no words afterwards. The cause of death has been suggested to have been either a stroke, cardiac arrest, tuberculosis, or even poisoning. As the last Danish king to rule over England, Hartha Knut had fallen very short of his father's legacy and military prowess. And much like a few hundred years later would be proven, that seems to happen quite a bit. Henry the Sixth, he granted he only came, he was only six months old. Was he nine months old when he became king after the death of Henry the, Henry the Fifth? And he proved that he was nothing like his father, Henry the Fifth. Agincourt and dare I bring in Edward the Sixth. Maybe Edward the Sixth was going to be worse than his dear old dad. We we don't know. But in his, I think when there's such a strong powerful king it's hard to hold up to follow that. But Thank you. I hope thank you, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do like and subscribe to let this Dinny Dunny channel grow so we can reach even more history lovers. And I'll see you all soon next week. Look after yourselves. Be good. Bye.